Hey guys, thanks for joining and welcome to our 81st video on ProjectEuler.net. Today we'll be taking a look at problem number 81, path sum two ways. The problem reads in the 5x5 five five matrix below, the minimal path sum from the top left to the bottom right by only moving to the right and down is indicated in bold red and is equal to 2,427. Find the minimal path sum from the top left to the bottom right by only moving right down in this matrix.txt file containing an 80 by 80 matrix. So this is similar to a problem we've done on this site in the past. The difference is we only had one possible direction. That one was represented by a triangle and we could only move down to the left or down to the right. But in this case, we can move to the right or down. So this one is a little bit more complex. So let's think about how we can implement a solution for this. The brute force type approach would be to start from the top and just traverse each path as we go until we find the one that is the minimum, and we would have to exhaust all the paths in order to get that minimum path. However, if we take that approach, especially for an 80 by 80 matrix, it'll take way too long to compute that. There's a lot of wasted computation going on. So we could memoize some of the results, and by memoize I mean, let's say we figured out before the path from 699 to 331, how long it would take the minimum path to it. Then if we got there by some other direction, we could reuse that result. So that's another possibility. But the one I want to take here is a dynamic programming approach. So what we can do is start from the bottom right and kind of work our way backwards. So first start from here. And really we would start from the bottom row. So basically figure out 331. If that, if you start there, then that's just the sum 331. If you start here, 37 plus 331 here, etc., etc. Same thing for this column. Then if we get to one of the other cells, we have that cell value plus the minimum of moving down or moving to the right. And so we can use our own matrix to represent that. We can get the values from previous results, get the minimum, and add that to the current result. Now we could also, if we wanted to, start from the top instead of the bottom, top left instead of bottom right, but then we'd have to flip the directions. We would have to approach it as if we were coming from the bottom to the top. So either way, there's some type of working backwards going on. So we'll take the simpler approach and just start from the bottom right. So let's go to our workspace, create a code file, and get started with that implementation. I'm going to be coding this in TypeScript. If you're not familiar with that language, it is a superset of JavaScript, and the syntax is similar to most common programming languages, so you should have no troubles following along in this video. I'm going to use a class for this, which is not required per se. I just want to leverage some utilities which I've written to run the program. Okay, so I've filled out some of the code already, mainly this read file. Not much interesting happening here, so I just pasted it in. We're reading the text file synchronously. Then we're taking the file contents, splitting them by new line. Then for each new line, we're splitting it by the comma, as it appears here, and then parsing the int. So that's all that's happening there. So in this do solve method, we have read file, then we're feeding that into find path sum. So this is where the actual logic of the program will go. So the first thing I'm going to do is initialize a matrix where we can keep sub sums. I'll call it sum matrix and just fill it with zeros. So we have to fill it with null just so it has some initial values. Then we'll map that. And for each row in that array, provide a new array. And just fill that with zeros. Then what we'll do is have two for loops to iterate over the items in the initial matrix, the input matrix. And I'll call these row and column instead of i and j. And we're going to go backwards here. So we start with the last row, and then start with the last column. First thing, grab the current value. Now, what we need to do is add entries to submatrix, but the indices are going to be a little different. They're going to kind of be the reverse since we are working backwards. So what I'm going to make is sum row is equal to matrix.length minus one minus row. So if the row is the last item, sum row will be the first one. Same thing with column. So that'll give us the offsets we need to work for the columns as well. So let's go back to the matrix here. Just make sure we have the concept right. So if we want the minimum path from 121 to 331, 
we can either go to the right down or down to the right. Now they show us in red here, down to the right is the optimal path. But how do we determine that? We can say, check the current value plus the minimum of row plus one cell and row cell plus one. So we're gonna take that approach here. So we're gonna grab those values and then compare in that sense. So the previous row value is some matrix. Notice the question mark here, I'm using optional chaining, so that way if the value is not defined, like it's out of range of the array, for example, we'll just get a null value. And what I'll do is I'll set it to infinity if it's not there, which will be convenient for us in a moment. Technically, the first question mark there is not required, but I'll, I'll leave it. Then, if both of those are infinity, that means we're probably on the edge of the matrix, so we can just put the current cell value by itself. Otherwise, we can do the current value plus the minimum of the two. And we're assigning some row some call indices to the sum matrix. The last thing we need to do at the end is just return the last item in the sum matrix. So let's go ahead and run this and see if we get the correct answer and if so, how long it takes to get that answer. Okay, so seven milliseconds is very fast. Let's see if this answer is correct. Okay, so we got the correct answer and the solution is very performant. So we have a good working solution here. So that covers the content for this video. If you made it to the end, please leave a like, subscribe, hit that bell icon for notifications for more project or other videos. I'm gonna keep posting these so we have 100 videos up and 100 problems solved. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.